Hello everyone, CMPX here and welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for all the support I got on the last video, you guys absolutely smashed it. If we can try and reach 20 likes in today's video, that would be amazing. You might as well just hit the like button now before you forget, I mean, it is free, so... Have you clicked it yet? Have you? Have you? Anyways, now that you've done that, let's move on. If you're new to the channel and you're interested in watching more videos like this, benchmarks and PC builds, then you have come to the right place. Uh, just hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated. Today, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be testing out the GTX 460 by NVIDIA and seeing how well it can hold up in 2020 in modern day gaming and seeing how well we can make the games look while maintaining a decent playable frame rate. I paid about 24 Great British Pounds for this card, including postage, which is roughly about 4 or 30 US dollars, went to say 40 then for some reason with a launch price of $200, which is $70 cheaper than the GTX 465. I was actually shocked with how well this card performed. I honestly didn't expect it to perform as well as it did, but there you go, some of them hidden gems, I suppose, as this card was really cheap, and for how well it performed, it would be perfect for, I don't know, if you were buying your child a sort of budget gaming PC to introduce them into gaming. Well, oh, there you go, there's, there's an idea for you there. I, I should be charging for all these good ideas that come on my mind. Anyways, like I said earlier, the card performed really well, especially for the fact the drivers haven't been updated for around two years. The card is based on the GH104 architecture and also supports DirectX 11 and also supports SLI, but we won't be doing any of that today. The card uses PCI Express 2.0 and the HDMI port is 1.4A and works up to 1080p. On VGA you can get 2048 times 1536 and DVI goes up to 2560 times 1600. But these are of course analog signals and you're probably better off sticking to 1080p on HDMI. The card specs are base clock of 700 megahertz, processor clock of 1400 megahertz, memory clock of 3600 megahertz and memory bandwidth of 115.2 gigabytes per second text units 56 and 336 CUDA cores and it's got a GDDR5 memory of 2 gigabytes but also a 1 gigabyte alternative as well to power the card you need two 6 pin power connectors and requires a 450 watt power supply or greater the card is said to draw 160 watts to power although I have not tested the power draw myself now, before we move on to the benchmarks in my last video with the AMD R9 380, I said I would give you an update on how the return went as the seller I got it from had a brand new account with no previous items bought or sold. If you haven't checked it out, click the link in the top right hand corner or I also leave a link in the description. So anyways, the guy had ignored the door to his postman judging from the looks of what it said on the tracking. It said the postman had left a card through the letterbox. Well, you might think he could have been at work, but yeah, he could have been, but then he could have also collected it from his delivery office. I messaged him on eBay and he ignored me so maybe he thought if he doesn't collect the item he will win the case. Here is a brief of the conversation I had with the eBay sales rep and see how they handle it without even questioning it. You can tell they get this sort of stuff all the time, not even answering my last question, lol. Anyways, now for the more exciting stuff, kicking off the benchmarks with GTA 5. In GTA 5 I was running the game at 1080p with medium settings and textures turned up to high and as you can see the game was running really good with an average FPS of 51 and 0.1% lows of 34. So if you're thinking of buying this card or you already own one and you are wondering if GTA 5 would work alright then as you can see from the result you'll be completely fine. And moving on next with another Rockstar title, Red Dead Redemption 2. In R Dead R2, I wish I could say the same story as I did about GTA 5, but sadly the game did struggle to one, which is no surprise as the game requires a lot of GPU horsepower for it to be playable. We're running at 800 by 600 and all settings at the very lowest, and I have seen better frames per second on PowerPoint spam clicking, with an average FPS of 16 and 0.1% lows of 13. Anyways, enough of that stuttery mess, let's move on to something which I think is perfect to test on a GPU like this. Full guys. As you can see I was right, which doesn't happen very often. The game was running at 1080p with the highest settings and we got a very playable frame rate. It's a shame my skills are letting the score down. Anyways, we got an average FPS of 36 and 0.1% lows of a solid 23. But if you wanted to, you could turn the game down to lower settings and get more frames. But in a game like this, I wouldn't say that's necessary. He's doing amazing in last place. Ah, oh, is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? And he gets sent backwards. 
And I'm quite sure the Lord himself was actually looking down on me because magically I actually qualified. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway guys, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the next title, Halo Reach. In Halo Reach on MCC, we were running at 1080p and selected original graphics, which I'm quite sure are the same graphics you would see on Xbox One. And I wanted to see if I could reach, mind the pun, 60 frames per second at 1080p. And it looks like my target was achieved and we got an average FPS of 60 and 0.1% lows of 22. You gotta give credit where it's due really because you would think Halo is a harder title to run. I suppose it's quite old but still it does run really well even on older hardware. You always get good FPS and the game just looks amazing still to this day. So if you are someone who has a lower end GPU or a lower end computer I would definitely recommend you give MCC a try because it does just look amazing and it always runs really well as long as you're not on something like a GT240 or something like that. It's also on the PC Game Pass which I'm quite sure you can get for like five pounds a month or something like that so yeah just wanted to put that out there and no people i'm not sponsored by microsoft don't be silly moving on with another game pass title gears 5. you guys probably didn't know but i'm actually a huge fan of gears of war and always have been and i'm so happy the game continued to do well since epic games sold it Oh yeah, sorry, this is a GPU review, not a game review. The game did run, although not in top settings, but actually low settings at 720p, but the game was very playable at, with an average FPS of 44 and 0.1% lows of 13. Even in 720p and low settings, I'd say the game still looked fine. I'd say the worst looking thing was probably the character models, but this didn't bother me at all. I still played the game for quite a while. Even after I stopped recording this stuff, I was still sat there playing this game for another 45 minutes. And it didn't bother me whatsoever. Next up, we have the Final Fantasy XV benchmark tool. And if you want to test this benchmark yourself, you can actually download this off the website. So then you can see if your PC can run Final Fantasy XV. It's also good just to test that sort of limit to what your PC can run because Final Fantasy XV is one of them games where you can run it in really low settings but you can also run it in quite demanding settings as well. In the FFXV benchmark I was running at 1280 by 720 at the lowest settings and I got an average FPS of 28 and 1% lows of 15. Because the game didn't look quite right, I then turned up a couple of the settings to see if I could maintain a minimum frame rate of 30, but also make the game look a little more appealing. So here are the results. Now with the same resolution, but a couple settings adjusted a little bit, I managed to get an FPS of 24 and 0.1% lows of 14. My plan really didn't work and we're stepping into the unplayable territory and that's a place you don't want to go. Quick, turn it off, turn it off, it's hurting my eyes. And the Outer Worlds is where I ended up and it saved us from that 24 FPS. The Outer Worlds was running at a resolution of 1280 by 720 and in low settings and it didn't look bad at all and was playable with an average FPS of 37 and 0.1% lows of 9. Anyways guys, I'm sorry this video came out a bit late, I was really busy working and stuff and I haven't had time on my hands to finish editing it. I promise my next upload shouldn't take as long. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and if you are new to the channel and you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe and bring them out. It means a lot to me that you enjoy my content as I put a lot of time and effort into making it, into making it for you all. If on the other hand you didn't enjoy it, then you know what to do. Get the out of here. Wait, I'm not actually allowed to say that? Says who? The people above us. Where did I put that tinfoil hat? Now I'm joking. If you didn't like it, feel free to dislike and have a great day. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Take care and peace.